Oh, hey. First viewing. Um, yeah, that's first time I'm streaming, so I don't know how to check who's, who's watching right now, but yeah, welcome. Oh, hey. Um, yeah, you can write something in the chat, so um, yeah. Don't judge me because, yeah, first time. Oh, hey, man. What's up? It's very, very weird feeling. Uh, oh, yeah, th thank you. Weird feeling because, yeah, first time streaming. Uh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> What's up? And, uh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey. I hope that, yeah, everything is clear. You actually can see. Cool. Hey guys. Hey everyone. I'm really, really excited that you came here to to watch me. And hey, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. That's so cool. I should have done these streams before. Yeah, <laughs> cool. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions, uh, drop them here in the chat. And maybe we should do some some just fun little setups. Um, I was thinking maybe we should just try some RBD scaling because a few of you, a few of you had any, hey, hey, Jonathan, yeah, uh, a few of you yeah you had uh, some questions about this rbd morphing like tutorial where we had a torus of like little rocks and then um those rocks transition to like spheres so i just wanted to show you some like other ways maybe we can do some some scaling um of some spheres maybe so yeah and if you have any questions i mean in general about houdini um yeah, and like uh, freelancing, I I think I have a bit of like experience in burning out <laughs> and changing jobs and and I, I mean I could share some stuff that you definitely should avoid in in my opinion. Um, what's your ideally PC hardware for Houdini or CG in general? So. Like right now I have two laptops. One of them is Asus ROG Strix Scar something. Uh, it's a 17 inch pretty heavy laptop with a i7 and RTX 2070, I think. And uh, I added extra RAM, so it's like 24 gigs of RAM. And this is like my main machine. Um, also I bought my and one MacBook Air, which is basically like, I was thinking that like MacBook Air is, is like a really portative laptop, which is basically for like surfing the web. Uh, but actually, at some simulations, it was faster than this Asus ROG Strix Scar something. And of course, yeah, it, it, uh, it has eight gigabytes of memory. So that's why I showed you that in, in the dotnet here in the simulation or no in the cache you can limit this like for like cache memory set to one 100 megabytes then it will go of course it will go um like in swap and use ssd but ssd is pretty fast in m1 so you can like use that that swap without without issues um i think i had uh let me let me open up, uh, no, how do I switch the windows? Just like, all right, let's go. So um, let me know if you can see this, this web page. This is kind of our local, one of the like best local shops here in Latvia for all the PC parts. And uh, I, I'm pretty, pretty much noob uh, in terms of like hardware. But I was thinking maybe something like AMD Ryzen 9, um, 
than uh, RTX 3080. So yeah, with with all these things, it's like five thousand euros or uh, five yeah five thousand euros and damn, I mean, it's a lot. And if we go and like check, all right, 3080. Mm, I don't think it was like this cheap. If we go components, um, where it was, video cards, and let's say we want GeForce, yeah, and uh, 3080, 3090. So you, yeah, you have like these 2,000, 5,000, 2,500 euros just to like spend to on, on GT, GPU and uh, I don't know why it's like this that difference like 180 and 250 but yeah I would definitely build something like with these Ryzen 9s Ryzen 9 uh, 5950 I think that was um, the number so yeah right like right now i'm i'm using this this fox farm um actually yeah that's that's a project um so i'm not that like not not pushing that much on like gpu because like this render farm is super fast and super cheap um so i don't have any problems like rendering with with them but i think i really want some some more powerful cpu um, to just like run simulations faster so yeah hey strider hey i'm good i'm good actually yeah i'm just uh like was talking about the the specs and then the hardware and yeah i know we can we can maybe build this little example here and check um like how this uh, how this um, CPU of mine performs? Um, it's i7 something. It's not the like the newest generation, but not the the oldest. So yeah, something in the middle. But yeah, that that laptop also was like two two thousand five hundred euros back when I purchased it like two years ago. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Maybe. Let's add a tube. Um, hey, mock rain CG. Hello, hey man. Sad points points. How much time a day you spend in Houdini? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. So, I usually. I still need to do a few of client projects and like um, my goal for this year is to like try and leave without clients and just like do tutorials, do asset packs, um, yeah, and make some some earning from that. Um, but yeah, for now I think I I wake up, I spend a few hours in Houdini, then I do client stuff. And I try to wake up really early, like 5, 5 a.m. And then then at like 3 p.m. I'm off from the client work and then I, I do Houdini again. And basically that's the time where I actually like record the tutorials and all that stuff. And and actually like when I when I can fall asleep, I also just like go to the forums and or Instagram and see maybe there's some some cool stuff that um, that I could recreate or like explain how it's built. Um, yeah, I actually like I was doing um, like my own um, effects and and like three D scenes, but then I realized that if something is blown up on Instagram and if I like I ask that person and I also like credit them and everywhere I share my tutorials, uh, then why not? I should like um, explain 
what that artist did. So yeah, I, I think that's that's just like win-win for everyone. Let's do points from volume. Drop a copy to points, target points to copy to, and our sphere. Too much. DM too much. Um, so, hey Nick, hey Riri, um, show us a quick setup on how to create Houdini hair. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I actually, actually did something 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 so um there are two things so there is a hair gen which is let's say we drop a grid and then hair hair generate i think what if because i worked with the volume and i know Oh, actually, hmm, okay, we have some some hair here. Um, then I think I had a tutorial about like, actually you can find it. Yeah, it's it's still like on on the channel um, where we we have this uh, human humanoid um, figure from Daz and he has like long hair and then we go like bzzz and just like make bold. Um, line here and uh, there you can find like all the hair clumping hair grooming stuff um, so yeah maybe that's that's better because I can maybe like um, forgotten something but for the hair there was guide I think guide process this one guide um, phrase Guide process uh, set length. Guide process. Um, I know it's bend. All right. I definitely want these to be uh, longer. So let's try attaching this one. Yeah. So uh, length. Six. I think this phrase was 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 a cool node. So what it does actually, yeah, it adds a bit of like you know this phrase. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And then you can also bend. Let's check. Um, we want in root direction. No, we we want direction constant. And now let's make it longer. Oh, hey, Harsha Adawali. Hey, man. Um, thank you. Yeah, PC specs. Um, Rogue Strix Scar 2, I think, or 3, but I think 2. Um, i7, RTX 2070, and 24 gigs of RAM. And uh, don't make my mistakes and buy laptop for Houdini. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah. I don't know, these new Apple M1 Max are pretty powerful, but I don't think that Houdini is optimized for ARM. But the main issue is the noise, because this thing is a freaking Airbus 
on a runway. Like it's it's seriously noisy um, till the point it's like distracting, and um, I gotta use these like noise canceling headphones. So um, yeah, um, what do we have here? Core attribute axis. Let's try and bend. Ah, okay, so now we are bending them. Yeah. Basically, you could just, uh, yeah, do this hair sim. It's, uh, I know it's hard to see. Let me maybe set the density to like, um, yeah. Yeah, you are correct. So yeah, you can you can create it uh, with hair again, and you actually can like create it with uh, with hair gen, and um, you can then get all these points. Um, let's say basically here you you are not like doing any sort of simulation, right? Um, there are also like brushes for like actually like like grooming and something but I have never used that actually because I'm more like doing all these abstract simulations but actually in, in Houdini you can like actually build like realistic hair hairstyles and all that stuff so yeah but you could just like add a group um, expression and this here and here we can first point of primitive and set the group type to points. So we actually like target all these points here. And then you can add vellum configure hair and add a vellum solver. Yep, like this. And here, what you need to do in Vellum Hair, you should add your pinpoints, set it to be group one, pin type permanent, same as position. Yep, I think it should work. Let's also, yeah, let's decrease the density to like, like 10. Um, and let's run a simulation and see. Yeah, so here's our um, hair so you can like hey hey dream team so uh, yeah here you can just like you can set up your hair with hair gen do all this like phrase band all that stuff and then you can just like simulate that into into vellum hair if you want so yep Um, I'm just started learning 3D. Should I first learn Blender? Um, actually, so I started with Blender uh, and I was doing like polygonal modeling. I was a game prop designer. So I was doing all these like weapons, barrels, gas tanks. I don't know any like props for, for different scenes. Um, then I switched to Cinema 4D um, and then basically I, like, I abandoned, uh, modeling at all. And, um, I don't think that Blender is, oh, hey, Serge, hey, hey. Um, and, uh, yeah, about the Blender. So Blender is cool, but actually I don't see any, like, reasons why someone, some should start with Blender. Maybe one of the reasons would be that you have much more tutorials for, for Blender um, than for Cinema 4D and, and, and compared with Houdini, yeah. Um, I know a few people that are, like, 100% Houdini and they never touch Cinema 4D and Blender. Um, as you might know from my tutorials, I actually, like, Sometimes I export Alembics and go to Cinema 4D. Um, I would say, you know, um, Cinema 4D is kind of like, 
I think it's kind of like industry standard. So if you plan to do commercial work, I would say learn Cinema 4D because for now, I think it's widely popular and I'm, I'm like thinking just like loudly thinking because I could say, you know, you should, you should learn, learn uh, Houdini just like from the scratch, from the start. It might be a bit like heavy, like with all these nodes and all that stuff. But I would say like the fastest way to get some work is to learn Cinema 4D. Um, but there are so many 3D artists who know how to do stuff in Cinema 4D that you either need to be really good at that to like grow um, in your like customer or client base or you should like know how to do some extra stuff that not so many 3D artists can do and that's uh, where you can learn Houdini you can learn I don't know maybe some cloth like cloth 3D or this um, second second software so yeah I think that's how you can like like oh sorry I touched the mic um, yeah yeah so yeah that's that's it Let's get back and do some RBD here. So, um, what I want to do, okay. Um, definitely make these smaller and I want it to be point separation oh hey hey man which point separation number should I try like 0 0.05 0 0.03 no, 0 0.02 oh actually we might need to add caps. Yeah, that's the thing that we need. And now let's go to point volume, point one, tube should be, should be, yeah, one. Cool. We have a grid of little spheres. So now let's also up our tube and no, let's let's back. Let's back and add a dot node. Now we wanna gravity. We wanna RBD packed object. Oh no, not here. We want a rigid body solver. And what do we also need? Maybe we need a merge. And let's add a ground plane. A quick quick hack here so this will not work if they are like crossing um, because left input affects right input but you can just like set it to mutual but and it will work but I still like love to do this so like it's more neatly organized um yeah so rbd packed object we need our copy to points 
grid active and grid deforming active objects. Yeah. Now, um, rigid body solver by, by the way it accepts all the like pop forces, so we may add pop wind, drag it to the pulse solve amplitude 0.2, swirl size 0.5, 45. Okay, we drop them. Yay, cool, cool, it works. Yeah, now let's let's make a mask. So mask from geometry. So now I don't want to pack them. Um, I want a mask. So let's add sphere polygon acquired reference geometry color just like to visualize that color should be uh, ram from attribute mask because this here you can see output mask mask so it produces mask attribute um, then here in the color we can visualize that so if we scale down and up and mask from geometry radius yeah so here you can see that we have our mask here um hey subham sync so there's nearly no studio or job in this field uh, where I live, I want to learn Houdini. The only way to make a career is freelancing. With your experience, do you think it's possible uh, to make a career uh, doing only freelance work? Absolutely. Like, yep, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I have a video um, that's like how to find freelance clients, and uh, definitely should watch that if you are considering like um, freelancing. But, um, like in short form, oh, th thanks, thanks, Dream Team. Um, so yeah, in short about freelancing, just like make yourself out. I mean, I I hope that I like taught that correctly. But um, yeah, basically, I send like five thousand emails, and from that, I get like five clients, maybe. So the ratio, like percentage, is very small, and yeah, but for me it worked. And if you have a strong portfolio, uh, you can you can create portfolio just from your personal um, personal like pieces. Because I don't think like I never worked in a in a team like uh, actually one one project right. But um, with all my other clients, I'm like one and only doing three D. Um, so yeah, and they don't care about like my previous like commercial, um, commercial experience. So if you have strong portfolio, just just blast emails, and then for me like Instagram and social media, I got one client from TikTok, actually, and that was that was great, but I got like for for all these like three years that I'm doing 3D or actually like two and a half, I got just one client or two clients from Instagram. Um, now I recently reached 10K followers on Instagram and I start to get some some like small um, like projects. But yeah, I think emails, emails works best. So yeah, just like do a cool portfolio and just, I don't want to say spam, but actually, yeah, just send a bunch of emails. And like saying bunch is like thousands. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, so, yeah, yeah, anyone, I'm really glad to, to see you here. And if you have any other questions, drop here in the chat, because, um, yeah, 
this this won't be like uh, like a, like a uh, John Kunz, I think, yeah, where he does all the all the cool stuff and these cool cool zone tutorials in life. Um, yeah, it's more like a just a I don't know Q and A and uh, just some some extra explaining in addition to my tutorials. And don't don't judge me um, hard because yeah, first time doing live and in my life <laughs> so um, yeah we have a mask here and we can use that mask to do any sort of things to our um, these spheres so Paul um, when do you decide to render only in Houdini versus jumping over to see it's even for the um, it depends on materials I'll be honest because um, I have sort of a library in Cinema 4D. Um, I have some commercial um, like libraries that I bought that I try not to use in like tutorials because I'm like selling them. Um, but yeah, it's mostly when I need to set up like stone textures or something like that. Um, I don't know, maybe some scene with actual like background. Um, yeah, then I switch to Cinema 4D because it's just like easier to manipulate the camera and the scene um, because like here I can create a bunch of nodes here in like the, the first level and then like use these to translate them. But it, I, I think it's just a matter of like... Uh, like where you spend the most of your time. And unfortunately, most of the time I'm still working for clients and that's why I'm working in Cinema 40 mainly. And that's why it's easier. Um, because I tried Octane and Houdini and it was like, it was so messy. You can you can try and, um, and check uh, like, um, just like Google Octane Houdini materials. It will, it will like be this big, no tree with all the values and floats and, and blah 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 and it's crazy i mean yeah so if it's just a color especially from particles <laughs> i'm doing that in in houdini and yeah of course um there's also a limitation of octane in cinema 4d or not actually octane but i think it's an alembic import um limitation where i cannot like read p scale properly and uh, I don't know, I cannot uh, read vertex or, uh, I mean, yeah, there, there are some limitations. So yeah, um, Hamed, uh, there's one way big question, brothers, how and where should I learn Houdini in depth for production? There's many, many tutorials out there, but nobody teaches Houdini in depth. So, uh, if you want mostly VEX, logic and math, of course. And uh, I, as a tutorial creator, can reply uh, uh, this question because uh, mostly people are not interested in learning math and programming like VEX. Um, that's why um, basically, yeah, less and less creators are creating these videos because we are interested obviously in in like engaging content and, and views. And yeah, um, I can suggest maybe looking for some courses, not tutorials on YouTube, because uh, like also I got a question um, in, in Facebook group about uh, like this uh, simulation of like some sort of alien spaceship going like uh, from the water and we have all the splashes and like um, the pyro sim, the smoke sim and all that stuff. And that's basically a rebel away course. So if you want to learn some, some big topic in depth, that's mostly a course. I particularly like, I don't like the course uh, structure that much because uh, I was like bored, bored at like sword, third or fourth lesson. 
and I took a few, uh, quite a few Houdini courses. Um, but yeah, I, I just like, like learning something from like recreating the tutorial. And if you ask how, how to actually learn Houdini, um, from, from my perspective, I also like, not also, but like majority of you, uh, also watch tutorials and what I do, I follow the tutorial and then I try to just, let's say, let's say follow the tutorial and got this set up and then I go and let's say turn off this node and see what it does. So, all right, we, we got these black circles. Why is there, they are black? Because here is the color node and color node is RAM from attribute. And what's, what's RAM from attribute? So we can just like hover, no, we can hover here and press F1 for more help. Actually, Houdini is like insanely documented and Houdini has also example files, the demo files. So yeah, um, like my way of learning is just going through the setup and just turning off, turning on something, trying to understand what each node does in a complete setup. I mean, if I drop a color node, just just like here, okay, that's a color node. It obviously, it like assigns color to points, primitives, vertexes, details. Um, but when it's in a setup, you kind of under understand why this node is used here in this in this point or place in this setup. So that's how I learned Houdini, and I kind of like I can't say I learned Houdini. I'm still learning. But yeah, that's that's how I learned it. Yeah. So, mask from geometry, right? Um, let's go dot net. What do we want? We want to scale, I think. Um, how do we scale it? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, Vax is great. And I truly think that everyone should like understand wax till the like certain degree um because like i love to introduce a bit of wax in my tutorials because a i was a programmer or developer for for a pretty long time and b i really think that wax is it's, it's not easy but it's it's understandable it's not that hard like how it is like the the I don't know how how you think it's, um, but yeah. So I I love to introduce just like a wax a, a bits of wax. Obviously, if uh, there will be a scene where we have like entire I don't know like pages of wax written, it might be hard to understand. Um, yeah, but um, oh yeah. By the way, like, what if we drop an attribute wrangle and then just like half of my viewers right now just like all right by. <laughs> so we have our mask. So what we can do here is let's say at a P scale and our P scale should be lerp, my, my favorite function from like since three weeks um, from, I don't know, let's try one and three, right? And it should be controlled by mask attribute. So yeah, obviously nothing happens because we want to get this here and then this here. Yeah, now something happens. So we need to set a P scale before we actually like copy to points, right? Um, 
an attribute wrangle, let's say 1.1 and 1.5, no, should be 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and 1.6. And no, I don't want these intersections. For this one, we will be just like dealing with a, without any intersecting geometry. Let me decrease the scale a bit. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, and now we can, if we will be animating this sphere, you can see that how we animate the, the, um, the P scale and the radius of the spheres. Actually, if we start at this point, we actually can go here, try one and two because at this point they are not intersecting like that's that's our starting point right um steward uh could you show us a good cloth flag setup um cloth flag mm, why not raid Oh no, not Sandra, or Tate by 90. Um, it should be, I assume, something like 30. No, 20. Mm, then you have some sort of a pole, right? So, tube. Let's just merge it right now so we can see that. Um, yeah, so our tube, where's our tube? Um, let me remove this, go back. Now we have our tube here. Um, we should get it here so it can intersect a bit. Um, then Or maybe 30 center like that. I know I'm not an expert. Um, um, yeah, so EP, hey, um, yeah, about the, the when do you decide to render in Houdini with jumping over to C4D? Mainly it's uh, because of materials and uh, in Cinema 4D I have a library of like my preset materials and it's much more easier to manipulate some, some parameters because um, for example if you check the Octane materials in Cinema 4D from like live uh, the database uh, for me it's freaking horrible because it's like I don't know tens or hundreds of nodes and float values and all that stuff. That's A and B. It's when I need to like set up um, large environments or just like complex environments. If we are talking about like simple materials where we just pick the particle color or some sort of like attribute and it like plug that into the diffuse and then just like update the roughness a bit uh yeah I'm, I'm doing that in houdini but when we are talking about like complex things and complex it's like it's very subjective right um but yeah um so hope that answers your question um yeah and we are back with um with our flag setup um actually never done flag setup so don't judge me but um what you want to do here is in the grid set the rows to be, I don't know, 20, 20 columns, in this case 40. Um, yeah. Um, here the trick. So I don't know if it, sh if it will, will work or no, but actually we can try it. So, well, um, 
I'm not, not the vellum brush, vellum cloth. And now we want to pin the points. Um, or we can actually add a group. We can add a group. We can get our tube in this group, and then set the group type to be points. Keep in bounding uh, regions, bounding object. Um, it should be, yeah, we, we should have these points here. And um, now we have our vellum cloth and what we have here. Maybe it should be all more stiff. So let's try this. Sorry, I got a call. Um, now vellum solver. Yep. I mean, sorry, <laughs> no, no, all good, man. Uh, teach how to install render man. Um, actually, I cannot because I have never installed the render man. Um, yeah, I haven't actually checked the render man and I know it's quite, quite like popular and I don't know why. Um, maybe, yeah, I should check that, but yeah, sorry, man. I can can help you here with the with the render man. I I just started learning Redshift, like after years with with Octane. <laughs> um, so yeah, Realm Solver. Um, no, we should pin wins. Group one permanent. Cool. Yeah, so that's that looks like a flag, but mm -mm, not like that. So forces pop wind. We want to pop wind and wind wind uh, velocity. Which axis x axis? So let's say five. Let's see. Yeah, that's something. Let's say I want 15 and some noise. Yeah, I think that's better. So I don't know if yes for the for the flag. That's your basic flag. Yeah. Actually, yeah, never never did any sort of flag simulations. But yeah. I think um uh, have you played with the white water? Nope. Nope, sorry. I, I haven't done any white water. I actually, you know, I don't do any sort of like um, massive VFX, um, like massive VFX uh, things in Houdini just because they are really resource hungry and, and take a lot of time and like my tutorials are aimed just to like explain um, how we can use Houdini for like good looking sort of like Instagram um, animations, Instagram style animations. And that's why I haven't actually done any sort of large explosions or white water or like reverse waterfalls, all that stuff. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, hey, Mattia, Miranda, uh, packing and instancing should be done after applying materials because of losing the name attribute, I think. Um, it might be. It depends, I think, um, because um, actually I was applying materials. Um, you can just like here in the, in the color. Actually, yeah, you can just plug that here. 
and copy to points and then you will have your um, your colors and you can pack an instance and here you will you will have all your your colors copied let me show you sphere let's get it up like this and after dopnet you can get your um dop io or no 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 no, no sorry dop import and you can um get your sorry dop network here and you should fetch unpacked geometry and actually but actually if we go unpacked and unpack we should have color yeah you can just transfer the attributes cd here so yeah Oh yeah, uh, steward. Um, yeah, you can just like use that group. So, yep. Actually, there's uh, this volume attach node. Um, it's not used for, and it's a hack. And I wanted to share that in in like future tutorial. But actually, um, when we did this. Uh, sticky peeling tape there was uh, vellum glue I think or vellum attach so these two uh, stay together and when you are doing any sort of um, fluid simulations and you know you can do the vellum fluid uh, like you can do the fluid with the vellum and the main thing that I see in majority of the simulations and actually I did like, but I did the flips flip simulation, but all right. So we are working with like vellum fluids, for example, and you should add this vellum attach if you are doing like vicious fluids, because when you paint something like small molecules or particles of that paint, they paint, they stick to the surface. And if you are doing like these vicious um, fluid simulations, you should use this volume attach uh, because then it will attach some of the fluid particles or fluid grains because technically fluid is grains. It will attach to that surface and then you will get this kind of like painting effect. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited because I discovered that myself. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's get back to the chat. Um, um, yeah, so what's the difference, Leslie, uh, what's the difference between a vellum clause and vellum constraints isn't in the same nodes. I feel like vellum clause just have more, um, it's basically, yeah, the here vellum clause is technically a vellum constraints and a vellum attach is also vellum constraints. It's just like a preset hearing sense constraint type. It will be automatically set to uh, cloth if you like let's say write volume configure I don't know what um, hair you will have constraint type hair here so that's that's the only difference basically and yeah it's kind of like um, different stretch bend normal drag and like density and thickness um, things here um, so, yeah, uh, Alec Sidman, been looking for some quality tutorials since the for a while. Your channel is a blessing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try not to not to stop with this channel. And I'm really I have a like strong dedication to um, actually like do 100 videos this year. And I, I know I already like I haven't started from the first January, um, but yeah. Um, maybe i'll catch up in in summer but it would be cool it would be cool to like do uh, a compilation of like all the tutorials like just like in a in a fast paced format um uh, next like when no this december like in the end of this year so yeah um 
and the interesting man looking for that tutorial i'm trying to get my hands on houdini <laughs> again hey <laughs> okay yeah um i actually did um let me try to find how should i open drumbox um now that will be I have so many tutorials, but like, not tutorials, but like project files, but uh, like, um, like just, just like projects that I, I've never finished. <laughs> uh, have you played with Solaris yet for scene layout? Um, actually, no, Paul, I haven't. Um, I know that like, I'm I'm not sure if that's in Solaris, but I mean they they did this thing that if you like drop a, a book on the table, it will be like it will recognize that table is like sort of a sort of a collider plane or something like I mean you can distribute many assets uh, in a physically accurate way, um, but yeah I actually I'm not doing any sort of like scene composition all of my stuff is pretty abstract so yeah um i haven't yeah actually checked the solaris i want to check karma um because some say that it's pretty fast so yeah i might i might check that um brick scraping fluid finally so um, brick fluid. Should we discard? <laughs> All right, yeah, let's discard. I'll I'll do this RPD setup again. Um, so brick and fluid. Oh god. So how do I break alembic? I have a brick. Um. Geo problem solver. <laughs> Go into the problem solver. No, but actually, I don't think that it's the correct one. And it's taking forever. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's wait. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. No, that's problem source. No. Yeah, I'll do a tutorial about that. Mm. Actually, let me let me try one once again. So, autumn leaves, claws, crystals. Nope. I have melting brain, I have melting face, melting tubes. <laughs> so many stuff. Maybe paint. No, that's not this here. You could paint. Nope. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a proper tutorial for that. But yeah, basically, the thing is um, you are just. Uh, yeah, you should use that. Not like you should use, but you should consider using that um, that node vellum attach for like um, some sort of painting simulations. Um, so one more question: Wet map. Wet map could do many many things like smoke source, other fluids. Um, haven't used wet map. Wet 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 maps, man. So yeah, sorry. Still learning Houdini myself, though. Should update the T. I don't know if any one of you are into Chinese tea culture, but I am um, for for a long time. So I actually like brew my tea in in like like 
this these little thingies i don't know if you can see but yeah that's a teapot and some like loose leaf tea there let me let me know in the in the comments <laughs> if any one of you like drinks tea in the in the same way that was a like huge culture um and these like chinese teas i have like like this this is a called um uh, like a tea pet and should be with you and uh yeah like supposed to drink tea with you um yeah i guess if we don't have any other questions like um you are more than welcome to ask but yeah let's maybe try and get that rbd uh set up yeah because it will be kind of in the in the next tutorial because by the way and um you fujishiro i think that's that's his name on youtube he does some houdini tutorial but also he did procedural and real-time simulations in unreal engine that that's mind-blowing i mean he he can control simulations from the trackpad or from the ipad or from the all all, all the different things um yeah that's super great go check his channel definitely um yeah um Tyrion Lannister what are the earning possibilities for a freelancer uh, talk numbers please uh you can go to the twitter and uh hashtag mograph paid me you will be amazed with some numbers that people can uh, earn but you know what I work with the US US and like UK and like primarily with US clients and uh, I am not char I'm not charging as like American uh, freelancers I'm not charging like five five bucks but uh, yeah I definitely charge a bit around like 10 to 15 percent less than average 3d motion designer in um, uh, USA and that's how I get the clients um, so yeah I started it with like 15 15 dollars an hour and then it's much more um, not not much more I can 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 say like much more but yeah basically uh, it really depends on the on the region and the the client and yeah my best advice is go and check the hashtag mograph paid me on twitter and you'll find that some someone gets like thousand in in a day and i was like one thousand in one day all right cool <laughs> um so yeah uh sorry if you already talked oh yeah tea is great <laughs> i'm addicted to it oh yeah <laughs> cheers man i'm yeah actually me too i have like a few kilograms um i don't know like what it will be for like americans and pounds but a few kilograms of of tea and yeah i drink that daily um so how familiar are you with the wax and all its capabilities so i'm not familiar with all its capabilities <laughs> because uh it's uh it's definitely hard to code if you have never coded anything like um i was a developer and that's why i kind of like wax i cannot say that i fully understand how that code transmits to the visual part because i I'm very bad at math, at um, like geometry, not like the geometry, but like the segment of the of the calculus, I think, or math. Yeah. Um, but I love VEX and yeah, I, I still think that to a certain degree, everyone should should uh, know VEX and um, 
there's this huge discussion about wax and wops. For me, it's easier to do stuff in wax. For some, it's easier to do stuff in wops. It depends. I mean, yeah, that that depends. Um, I'll suggest just like try to incorporate wax in your workflow, um, like bit by bit. I mean, if you are really like scared and you you feel like you don't need wax and you don't want to learn it, you can just like do some simple stuff to just like um, prove yourself that why not let's learn the wax so you can you can assign color in wax for example you can move things in wax you can do linear linear <laughs> interpolations no it's hard for me to, to actually say that yeah um uh, so russian colleagues <laughs> You earn as much as you can sell yourself for. That's true. I think it's true for every business because you know what? Um, right now, you cannot say that artists are struggling um, because uh, I think NFT gave a lot of possibilities for, you know, actual artists. Because I consider myself more of a like a designer or some sort of a commercial designer than an artist and in commercial world or stuff um, yeah it's basically it's how you present yourself also um, if you come and say hey please give me work I'm very very beginner and I just need something for portfolio then I assume you won't uh, earn that much but if you come with your own ideas, uh, you're confident. If you like, if you show that working with you, the your client will will get even more than he is actually paying you in like in money. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm distracted with the chat a bit. <laughs> Um, so I'm eager to learn and want to worry myself just kind of slow start yeah uh, when I started learning Houdini it was like like poor pure pain it was like how to do that and this but when you build up um, the experience in Houdini at some point you you are like oh I want to do this and that and I actually know how to build a setup that will kind of look like I, I think I want it to look like. And then you are like, oh, cool. And that's that's the good part. Uh, one last advice for people reading this. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I second this. <laughs> Learn trigonometry. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know trigonometry and I don't know math. Um, and yeah, I know that there's many, 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 many awesome things that you can do with math. Actually, I, I checked, um, there's this thing right now called creative coding. It's basically math um, and programming and not like programming scripting, but yeah, anyways, in JavaScript. And I was like, damn. Because these guys, you really need to know math to do that. And like, as I understand that. Um, so yeah, but there are some, some really cool stuff that done just by math, like with math and mathematical functions. Yeah. Right, let's maybe Let's maybe try doing this RBD um, thingy once again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we want geo. So, sphere tube. 
Boolean's from volume. That's and and caps. Copy just to visualize that. Copy to points. Boom, boom. Sphere, polygon, frequency, three uniform scale, point two, um, tube height set to point one. All right, radius scale. Nope. Ah, um, all right. Oh, okay, now I see. Yeah. So, sphere. We just don't want them to intersect. All right, now we can add our mask. No, I want mask from geometry, not along geometry. So drag this here, this sphere, all right, the, we can drop an attribute wrangle. And I mean, learning wax, um, you can force yourself to learn wax with like these, these simple functions. Um, like, yeah, P scale. P scale should be one to three. Let's say one to three. Um, mask. It's actually hard to like talk for, for a long time. <laughs> I know how, how long we are here. Um, it's like an hour, I think, I think, yeah, an hour. Yeah. So, okay. Um, mask, and then we copy the points and also get the color. Run from attribute, mask, the sphere. Maybe we went a bit more um, on these points, like this maybe. Yeah, cool. So, these get, no, we wanna actually Send the piece scale to be one here, I think. I'm just thinking why we have these so small. Oh, 73 minutes. Okay. Let's try from two and three. And radius. And learning Houdini through a course it feels very tiring by hearing 
Same thing again and again. <laughs> Mm, yeah, you know, uh, I, I like these short tutorials much more, uh, but it's very hard to, for example, teach, I don't know, large scale simulations or white water simulations in a tutorial. And I don't think that are many like good tutorials for, for this because it's, uh, it, it will be a long tutorial for like this one theme and maybe someone someone did that but like from the production standpoint um, yeah it's better to like do a course and then split it and from the learning standpoint it's also I think it's maybe it's better to actually follow courses for these large topics if you just want to learn how to use this or that or how to create some sort of a setup then yeah definitely tutorials are easier and like more i think friendlier maybe but yeah if we're talking about like large scale pyro sims earthquakes i don't know i don't know yeah but basically yeah something something that i i would cannot like teach you in like 20 minutes like all my usual tutorials are like from 15 to 20 minutes so yeah um what do we have particle radius scale oh it's a p scale by the way so now if we copy the points yeah now we have this p scale attribute um so if we go to let's say we want one and here we can set it to be uniform scale set to one yeah now it's working and damn one two What have we done in the previous setup so it was working? Distance from the geometry. It's so strange. Yeah, obviously. You know, it's like, yeah, 73 minutes talking and sorry. Of course we need a function, right? Because I don't know what's what's that basically we need a function at least i hope so so all right now we then we don't need this and in attribute triangle we can go and linearly interpolate it now yeah finally yeah the problems of quacks so they are intersecting but that's okay and go even like this so now what we can do is start by this and in like 90 frames we will go like this so now we can drop a dop network. We can pack and we can drop a dop network. If we pack, yeah, we still get our animation, so no problems. And now we have our dop net. Here we dop gravity. I'm actually building <laughs> the dop nets from like, uh, the, like from the bottom to the, to the, to the top. So if we drop a merge, and we drop a ground plane, and then we drop a rigid body solver, and then we drop a re RBD, RBD backed object. Boom. All right. In RBD packed object, we add a sub path, 
Um, let's let's do a proper setup. Um, let's add null and out spheres. All right. Now we drop our out spheres. Create deforming active objects. Yep. All right. And now, yeah, we want to. Let's play. Boom. Cool. I think we should add some sort of a collider, right? So, and you can scale these. You can add like, I don't know, many different spheres and um, add a time frame or keyframe actually. Um, and yeah, just like scale it, let's say here, then here, then here, then here. And yeah, pretty basic, but but cool setup. Um, I don't know if we add some just some sort of a collider. Let's add a tube. Um, let's add another one. <laughs> so merge them um, like that. And the first one and the second one we need end caps. And obviously I want them not that high, but like like this maybe. And for this one we want boolean boolean oh yeah, that's billiard, <laughs> right? Um Boolean intersect I think. Um here and here. And for this tube, we want that um, a bit higher. And no, why not? Why it's not working? All right, that's why it's not working. So it should be like this and like this. Maybe now. If we subtract B and A, yay, now we have some sort of a collider set up. Let's maybe add a few more columns. Yep, like that. So for OBD to work properly, we want to remesh this. Um, you can either remesh or do um, BDB from polygons. Font size 0 0.05. I think this this might work. Um, then iterations. Yeah, if you have these these ugly things here, just uh, add more iterations. It'll fix that. Um, yeah. Now. Let's visualize where our copy to points are. So they are here. Um, all right, then we need transform. Um, uniform scale. Like this. And translate. Yeah, cool. Um, now we can add another null out collider. Let's go into our dotnet and what do we want here? We want not a ground plane, we want to static object. Boom. And here, let's say out collider. Uh, for the collisions, mm, will a data show guide? Uh, so yeah, we don't want actually like convex hull. We want um, concave, I think. Nope, 
capsule or we want like surface ah all right so it should work yeah um yeah let's try why not no it's actually not working that uh you're deforming create active Maybe let's try that Means volume collisions maybe collision guide I'm not sure if like which one should we try yeah that's definitely not working <laughs> So yeah, let's try what do we have here for the surface for the bullet data. I don't know if we actually need bullet data here. Yeah, let's try volume. So RBD, oops, not RBD. Um, PDB, PDB from polygons. Zero point zero five, I think, or actually point two. Um, yeah. Hey, um laser scan i'm not sure if it does anything oh let's try by the way let's try in the where it is in static object there is an option laser scan volume let's try laser scan i'm not sure Yeah, I think we should like check the volume, right? I mean, we have this VDB. Let's maybe try adding that, like out VDB collider. So then we can out, oh no, out VDB collider. Then here we can do volume sample then proxy volume we can oh no, no actually we need out vdb out collider and then out vdb collider here and um, maybe let's try this one and inverse size by size not sure why it's not working here i wanted just like some cool simulation like yeah like a billiard or snooker or something uniform division up 200 this one you mean this one? Or actually, which one?
strange that they don't want to fall down here. And that's strange. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should actually check um, this one. So here, I just want to quickly it be reshape SDF. So this one, so we don't have that that big of a difference. Yeah. Everything should be the same. So are they falling or not? The one thing that it obviously um, you can see and somehow they still go inside the geometry. Yeah, that's strange. Yeah. Let me get a ground plane here. Yeah, because here RBDs are working. And why we cannot just like drop them here from a higher distance, I think. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think we will need to do another tutorial about collisions. Alright, 
so if you have any like other questions let me know and i think we will wrap this up in like oh keep the amazing work man always excited uh, thank you will do <laughs> thank you yeah we, we will wrap that that soon i think i'll just figure out why the these complex shape static objects or like collisions are not working properly and then i'll record you a tutorial because there are a bunch of cool effects that you can do with just like playing with these spheres and like scaling them up i saw actually there is a uh, tutorial by intagma they and they actually like show you how to scale the the packed rbds like just like the same effect that we are doing here um and like I really love uh, Antagma and big respect to them and like, I mean, they they are definitely like the, the main source of um, learning Houdini on YouTube. Um, but as soon as they are like typing metrics in, in Vax and that's not the Vax that's scary, the metrics for me, for like the one who doesn't know math um that that well and i mean i'm really bad at math and uh yeah then he like not, not he but then it just killed killed that tutorial for me <laughs> so here's yeah like almost no wax just like one lerp lerp function yeah so all right, guys, I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, I'm really, really glad that you watched my first live stream and I did my best to like answer all your questions. And I hope it was uh, useful in some, some sort, uh, some way, definitely maybe not that packed with information as tutorials but hey that's something new and some new experience for me also and uh maybe we should do these uh live streams here and there not like here and there now and then i think that's how you tell to say that so yeah um thanks a lot for watching everyone and yeah I'll be back very soon. Bye.